Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 21st, 2017. This first article is from IFL Science. NASA breaks record with ion thruster that could take humans to Mars. I've talked about ion thrusters before. Uh, their advantage is that they uh, just basically sip fuel. They don't use very much fuel. They're not really super strong. They don't push really hard, but they keep pushing and they push continually for long periods of time. So even with a small push in outer space, if it's a continual push, you can get up to uh, huge amounts of speeds and percents of uh, light speed fairly fairly easy given uh, enough time. So anyway, according to this article, scientists have announced a breakthrough with an ion thruster that could one day take humans to Mars. It's called the X3 thruster, a type of ion propulsion known as a Hall thruster. This technology is alluring because it can theoretically achieve higher speeds than conventional chemical uh, propulsion. In this series of tests at NASA's Glenn Research Center, researchers said they had now achieved a record power output for a Hall thruster opening up a new avenues of research. We have shown that the X3 can operate at over 100 kilowatts of power. Alec Gallimore, the project's lead and the, deal, and the dean of engineering at the University of Michigan told space.com. It generated 5.4 newtons of thrust. The previous record was 3.3 newtons. So, Another reason to take us on to Mars, and I did notice on uh, one of the past Science Fridays, too, they interviewed one of the astronauts. I believe it was the astronaut that, had, as far as American astronauts, spent uh, the most days in outer space, over 350 days. And uh, he was talking about that uh, even with engineering they have nowadays, it shouldn't be more than about a 200-day trip to Mars. You stay for about a year and then uh, 200 days back and he sees no reason why we couldn't do it even in several years. He said right now it's more a political problem than it is an engineering problem. So even with the factor of the radiation and stuff like that, he said these things um, we're more than capable of dealing with them right now. We have the astronauts ready to go so it's all about the politics of are we willing to do it. And this next one, all the links as usual, all the links will be down in the description below. The next one is from sciencenews.org and this is about another thing about LIGO. I was talking about that uh, LIGO may be used for a lot of different things that a laser interferometer experiment. Basically two lasers put at a 90 degree angle to each other to detect gravitational waves. Well, they detected two neutron stars colliding and they needed some information. Scientists needed information on what's going on uh, compared to what the theories were for neutron stars colliding. Well, evidently not only did LIGO end up detecting the gravitational waves, they were actually able to close in on it with some regular um, regular type of telescopes too and actually see where this was occurring. So uh, according to this, and I'm not going to read the whole article, but um, the little uh, uh, caption underneath the one picture here, LIGO and Virgo used gravitational waves to narrow down the region where two neutron stars smacked into one another. NASA's Fermi Space Telescope detected gamma rays from within the region outlined in yellow. And uh, I'll put the picture up here so you can see. Um, yeah, visible light from the crash allowed scientists to pinpoint the galaxy NGC 4993 so they know exactly where it's coming from so it looks like LIGO is going to be uh, very useful as far as astronomy and stuff like that. Um, they also learned, they wanted to learn more about the squishiness whatever that means of the neutron stars when they collided together so um, that's kind of cool. More uses for LIGO. And last up, actually I will talk a little bit about my plants too, my lettuce plants but First, uh, I would like to uh, promote this one, Science Friday. This was this, the latest Science Friday from October 20th. Leonardo da Vinci, Master of Art and Science. And this is an audio file, so I'm not going to bother to play it for copyright reasons, although I could probably get away with it being that it's a, an NPR thing. But if you're interested in people, I think, that are some of the top historical geniuses, I think Leonardo da Vinci is one of the top three geniuses. I think it's um, probably Nikola Tesla, Leonardo da Vinci, and Einstein. And, uh, maybe you could even swap some of those places, but I think those are about the three biggest geniuses that I can recall in, uh, in, in my lifetime. Well, Leonardo da Vinci obviously going way back before my lifetime. But, uh, yeah, just people that are extreme geniuses. And Leonardo is the case, too. I mean, basically, he was starting with scratch. I mean, he had to come up with engineering theories and stuff like that and test things a lot of times for the first time. So um, if you get a chance, check that out, too, on Science Friday. So anyway, here's some pictures of my continuing lettuce farm and as you can see by these pictures too I have whittled it down to one plant per container now so and uh, they said to do that when it gets its third real leaf the two 
leaves uh, going side to side, the baby leaves, and then the other leaf in the middle that's coming up is the actual true lettuce leaf. So this is at about one day short of the two-week period, and by three weeks you can, if you want to, some people say within three weeks you can start harvesting them, but they're really, for practical purposes, it's better to wait till about four weeks. So we'll see how they go too. I, I don't know if I'm giving them optimal conditions if they're growing as fast as they normally do for other people. I try to keep it out of direct sunlight. One time I did actually put these in direct sunlight accidentally, um, didn't watch and move them back out of the way and they did wilt just a little bit but they recovered okay. So they may or may not be growing at the normal rate for other people but we're gonna see and I'll keep track of them and show you how they are in uh, three weeks. So anyway that's about it for this week. Take care everybody. I will catch you next week.